Hello, folks. Welcome back to the community update of the Merrimack Police Department. Again, I'm Officer Kelleher. Um, today, we have a special guest with us, and it is Assistant Principal Bill Morris. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, Thanks welcome. for yeah, joining yeah, me. My pleasure. Um, today, we're going to be talking about school opening right around the corner. Right around the corner. Right. When, when is Merrimack open, Bill? Um, September 2nd. Yep. September 2nd for? For, for, for um, students. For students? Sorry, September 8th. September, September 8th. 8th. September 8th for students. Yep. Okay. So, folks, it's that time of year again. The beginning of school. Mm -hmm. With that, there's a lot of safety precautions that, you know, throughout the summer, people have, you know, kind of forgot about. Um, obviously, the speed of vehicles in neighborhoods and, you know, throughout the town. Um, it's a major concern, and we always, you know, the call volume is always increased at the beginning of the school year. So that's why we're doing this episode this month, so we can avoid any, you know, dangerous situations from occurring, um, so it's safe for the community and the children. So... Let's talk about some of the concerns that, as police, you know, obviously the you know the safety and welfare of the children um, is our you know major concern. So, with that said, you know some safety precautions we can talk about is first of all, leave yourself some more travel time. You know, with the distracted driving and you know everybody in a rush. You're not used to, you know, getting up for school and getting the kids ready for school. So, you know, that's the majority of the, you know, accidents that occur is because people are in a rush. You know, they're, they're not acclimated to the routine yet. So please do us a favor and yourself. Get up early and give yourself plenty of time. Okay, um, all school zones are 20 miles an hour, and that's if the conditions are perfect. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes 20 miles an hour might not be reasonable. You know, if there's a heavy traffic flow mm -hmm. or um, visibility is poor. Um, some major concerns that we see is the visibility on Babusik Lake Road coming over the overpass some mornings that sun is so bright the clear is that, that you can't see. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, please use caution. Everybody knows that, you know, when you come over the hill, there's going to be a crossing guard right at Babusik Lake Road in O'Gara Drive, um, you know, early in the morning for the, the high school, you know, school traffic. Um, so please obey the, the school limit speeds um, what that does also gives you you know if you have to stop suddenly you know the lower speed you go and the more reaction time you have mm -hmm. so um, and be prepared for any any type of you know reason for you to stop just high traffic volume or um, you know could be an accident ahead of you whatever so, um, what else? Let's talk about obviously speed in neighborhoods. Um, we always, you know, get reports early in the in the school year of you know speeding vehicles. Again, it's a uh, you know there's reasons for that. You have young youth drivers that are driving. Um, you know, their inexperience with, you know, dealing with opening a school and, um, you know, the concerns. And then again, it's, it's the folks who, you know, are in that rush. They didn't, they didn't plan ahead, um, you know. So it's extremely important to make sure you're not rushing, especially the first few weeks of school. Everybody is getting used to, you know, seeing kids, um, you know, on the road, up that early, um, 
And, you know, we see this time of year, we always see a lot more kids riding their bikes to school, mm -hmm. walking to school, um, you know, parents accompanying them. So please be careful. You're going to be sharing the road with, you know, a lot more people than you're used to, you know, over the course of the summer. Um, and who else are you going to be sharing the road with? Those big yellow school buses, right? Um, you know, we have a lot of them in town. Um, we have many children in our school district, so you're going to be sharing the road with a lot of school buses. And again, give yourself some time because you know you're going to be stopping. Um, you know, with that said, you know, people get frustrated that, you know, they're stopping, you know, at every school bus stop. That's, that's the way it's been for mm -hmm. 100 years, yeah. right? And it's not going to stop. As long as we have kids in schools and that's, school buses, that's the way it's going to be. So if you don't want to be stopped, leave a little early. Mm -hmm. Prepare yourself, right? Prepare another bus route or a travel route to work. Um, but please, be cautious. Um, school buses and children, um, very dangerous. The school bus driver, you know, has a very important job to do. Uh, you, we might have some new school bus drivers. Could be, yeah. You know, they're just learning their, their own routes. Mm -hmm. They don't know where the bus stops are going to be or how many kids. Especially those first couple of days. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, you know as mm -hmm. much as I know that, you know, those first few weeks, the school bus drivers getting acclimated to, you know, New routes. having 50, mm -hmm. 75 kids on a bus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so their attention is, you know, a little distracted as well. They're looking out, you know, in their mirror for the safety of the children and, you know, also the roadway. So please help your, your school bus drivers and, you know, making their job a little easier and safer. Um, you know, sometimes we'll come upon somebody and, you know, they pull out in front of the school bus because they don't want to get stuck behind it. That's not an excuse to, you know, cause a dangerous, you know, mm -hmm. situation. And, you know, you're going to be dealt with, you know, serious, seriously. Um, and so let's talk about some of the rules and the laws of school buses. Um, when the school buses are approaching children or, you know, when they put those yellow lights on, it's sad when you see people, you know, speed up or, you know, continue without braking. Right. When the school bus driver puts those yellow lights on, they're warning you that, hey, I'm about to stop. So do yourself a favor, help them out, and help yourself out by, you know, slowing down and, and stopping for them so they can, you know, pick up the children safely and make it more or speed up the process um, because they can't put their red lights on if there's traffic still passing them. Um, and let's talk about the law. If you do pass a school bus with the red lights on, you will be going into the court and visiting with the judge, okay? Um, it's a serious offense and, you know, there's no fine for that. You must appear. You mm -hmm. must come in and speak to the judge. And I don't think anybody wants to go in there and try to defend themselves why they ran through a school bus mm -hmm. red lights on. Um, so please, you know, help the bus driver out, keep everybody safe, just stop. When you see the yellow lights on, you know, come to a stop. If the bus passes you, you know, you may proceed, but it just helps the bus driver, you know, be able to stop. Um, 
without having to you know watch traffic and watch the children on the side of the road uh, so knowing when to stop we have some problem issues in Merrimack um, that we've dealt with over the years um, and one of the laws is you, you have to stop within 25 feet either in front or in the rear mm -hmm. um, it's just a safety zone for the for the kids and if everybody knows on Daniel Webster Highway up at Society Hill, the north end of town, Society Hill has many a children that are in the Merrimack Public Schools. So right at the entrance is a bus stop. And at the same time, it's an intersection. There's a set of traffic lights there. Let me tell everybody, school buses, they trump traffic lights, okay? If the school bus has its red lights on and you have a green light, you cannot proceed through that green light, okay? That school bus takes precedent over any traffic control device, okay? Uh, many times, and we do it every year, especially more towards the beginning of the year, um, we will have some traffic enforcement up at that intersection because it's dangerous. People think they're going southbound, they have a green light, and the bus stops going northbound, and they're, they're letting on children as cars are passing the school bus. It is a violation, and you will be ticketed. So... Anytime you see a school bus with its red lights on and they're on a, a way, a road, you must stop. Even if you have a green light, you must stop. So on the other end of town, anytime there's a divided roadway, you can pass a school bus. As long as there is a divider in between north and southbound lanes, mm -hmm. you can proceed if the bus is on the opposite side. Uh, Daniel Webster Highway, um, just north of Anheuser-Busch, um, we do have the, um, there's a couple hotels there, and, f you know, beginning of school, there'll always be some issues there, mm -hmm. because you know, Daniel Webster Highway, it, it's wide, but it's not divided. Mm -hmm. So if the bus stops, you know, picking up students there, um, you know, people tend to pass the school bus. So again, read up on the laws, or if you don't know the law, feel free to call the Merrimack Police Department, 424-3774, and we will answer any questions you have. Okay, um, so I think we went through all that. And again, folks, just be careful in the neighborhoods. Um, you know, there's going to be many kids walking, riding their bikes, walk, uh, riding scooters, whatever. It's, you know, it's still warm out, so please be careful and, uh, you know, just use caution. Uh, one last thing I want to say is um, crossing guards, okay? Please, you know where they are. We have one at, at O'Gara Drive in the morning for the high school. He moves down at Lake Road at School Street mm -hmm. for when J. Muse yep. opens. So there morning. And we have a crossing guard out at Thornton's Ferry School, a Camp Sergeant at Thornton's Ferry School. So they're there every morning um, and afternoon. So please use caution. Um, you know, whatever the road conditions, if it's raining, snowing, icy, um, in the mornings, the sun, the sun glare, um, just reduce your speed and know that they're going to be there and, and, you know, just o obey the school crossing guards, okay? They're there for a reason. They're trying to help, you know, 
move the kids in and out, move the school buses, they're crossing students across mm -hmm. the street on bus on uh, bicycles or yep. walking. Um, and they're trying to get the flow of traffic moving. So please be careful and you know help them do their job so everybody's safe. So now let's talk about um, some issues, Bill, at, at J Muse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had some different traffic patterns over mm -hmm. the years there, um, you know, due to some high volume of, you know, parent drop off and stuff. So, um, so first of all, you, you want to uh, talk about J Muse or any important dates yeah, or anything? We're, we're very excited for the start of the school year. And we always begin with a meet and greet for our fifth graders and their parents. And that will be September 3rd, Thursday night, from 6 to 7 p.m. All of our fifth grade parents and their children, fifth graders, will come into the school and they will go to the Smith Gym and they will be in um, a welcoming from Principal McGill and myself. And then students will be sent off um, with their um, classroom teachers and they'll visit the classrooms and parents and students will meet the teacher and it's a great um, beginning of the year and then and, and that's a, a nice preparation and then students will have have the long weekend and and begin the, the following um, um, Tuesday the day after Labor, Labor Day on the 8th and then on September 30th we will have a an open house for just sixth grade students and their parents sixth graders have been in the school for a year so they're a bit more familiar but they'll come in on um, on the twenty, uh, sorry, on the on the on the thirtieth of September, from six to seven. On that night, um, they will um, parents and students will go directly to their classes, um, and um, Mrs. McGill and I will be available. Um, but um, students will go right on up and, and see their teachers. So um, we know all of our teachers have been many of them have been, been in training. They've been planning. The school is looking; uh, it's shining beautifully, and we're just very excited for the students to come. That would be nice. A good little transition into. Yeah, you know the it, upper we, elementary. Well, yeah, we find it, it just it it, it, it um, lowers a lot of anxieties um, for, for for children with the the first transition in the district, and so this way the students have seen their classroom before they start for the year, and and they've met their teacher, and so so haven't their parents, and I think people re people really like that. Very good. Do um, you want to tell the um, maybe we have some new new parents? Um, they decide to. You know, bring their kids to school mm -hmm. instead of being on the school bus. Um, yep. So you want to just tell them about you know what they need to know. Absolutely. Where to go. Um, most of the students do ride the buses, but we do have some families that, that need to, to drop children off. And so what, what we ask is that no students are dropped off before eight ten when staff are on duty. And so um, parents. That was eight ten. Eight ten. Yep. Eight ten in the morning. Eight ten in the morning. So we don't. Want any parents on waiting before eight ten? Yeah, our students dropped off before them because we just want all all students to be safe, and we want to make sure that staff are there ready, ready to greet them. And so, um, for our tra so our traffic pattern now is any children being dropped off. We ask that um, um, parents drive up on McElwain, and depending on the direction, they're either going to take the first or the second the um, turn onto the the church parking lot. Um, it's the, the uh, lane that's closest to the fence, and so the, the um, parents will turn on, and they'll drive all the way up to the cross, all the way up almost through the parking lot, um, and and they'll they'll begin lining up. And what we do ask is that um, the, maybe the first six to eight cars that arrive, um, if they if they go through, um, um, go through onto um, School Street, and begin lining up along the school building, the, just the first six to eight cars. That gives us a little bit more room at the other end to help eliminate cars backing up on to, to McElwain. And then um, at 8.10, um, teachers will come out um, to, um, to um, accept students. The first six to eight cars that are out there will be, um, will, those students will be, um, those cars will be um, 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 emptied of, of the students. The students will head on in. And then um, we'll, then we'll begin um, taking the cars at the crosswalk. Um, the first four to five um, cars will then be out. We ask parents to have students sit on the passenger side, so the, um, students um, exit on the passenger side, and then parents will drive up and turn left onto school, and then continue down onto Bishop, 
and take that left onto bishop. And and so um, that's that's the um, traffic pattern that we have. Yeah, makes sense, right? Yep. You don't want kids getting out from the driver's side no. and cutting in front of other cars. And yep. So if they're on the passenger side as they pull up, they just yep. get we, out of the vehicle. And, and we have lots of staff out there in the morning yep. um, to um, guide the students across um, the crosswalk and on, on into the building. And I'll probably be out there myself. Yep, yep, you usually are. Yep, and thank I'll, you. Uh, you know, help things run smooth and yep. safe and... And the, we and we anticipate the first couple of days, um, you know, um, students will, will just need, need that assistance just because it's so new for so new for half the students. Yeah. Um, you just talk about a little bit about the schedule for the upper elementary, like yep. what time school starts. So and this and this would be a reminder for our sixth graders who are returning and our fifth graders who who are coming for the first time. So our, our school day um, is from eight ten to three twenty five, and so we begin um, about fifteen minutes later than the uh, K-4 elementary schools, and we end about 15 minutes um, later on the other end. So our students have um, 120 minutes of English language arts during the day, an, um, 60 minutes of math, an additional 15 minutes of, of um, math, math um, fact um, practice, and um, students have a 45-minute unified arts period each day. And at the upper, upper elementary school, students have PE, art, music, World language and computers, um, and so um, world language is either a half a year of French or a half a year of Spanish. And for um, music, um, we have a, um, a full instrumental music program. Miss Aranita is our, our band teacher, and, stu and um, so students who have instrumental music um, lessons those occur during when their class is scheduled for music. And so when it's music music time, students that are learning an instrument will see Miss Aranita. And students that will um, who are not taking an instrument will see Mr. Moore for for general music. Very good. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, drop off and you know pick up like in the afternoon. Yeah, pick up in the afternoon. Yep. So um, we have um, again most students take the bus. For those students that are not taking the bus, um, if parents are picking them up, they would be. Um, considered a walker, we call them walkers, and students uh, must come in with a, we must have a note on file, either daily or, or even a note for the whole year, and then students are placed on a, on a, a walker list. And at the end of the day, um, any students that are, are on the walker list are, are called down to our all-purpose room, and we've got um, plenty of staff in there to check off all the students that are supposed to be leaving as walkers, and um, the staff walk the students out, and then across the crosswalk, and parents are waiting on the other side of the crosswalk to to um, accept um, their children, and so um, and that takes a little little time. Um, you know, we begin um, we call the walkers um, usually um, um, first, but it takes a little time to check off. But but um, but they do all come out and and we guide them across. There are some students who are um, who actually walk home uh, to the library, and those students would would follow the same process. Um, in addition, any student riding a bike. Um, they will. Um, they need to be checked off as well, and students who um, are riding a bike have to have um, a helmet, um, or else um, we, we can't dismiss them um, with, with their bike bikes. Very good. All right, bike safety. Yep, very right. important. It, and it's the law. Anyone under sixteen must have a helmet on. Um, so, the Master Cole Elementary. Where where does their buses and Pete? That's, that's a great, great um, question. So, a um, Mexico Elementary School, their um, students are um, picked up. Uh, sorry, their students are dropped off and, and picked up on O'Gara. They have their own um, parking lot on O'Gara, and so any any um, parents who have children attending Mexico Elementary School um, would um, bring their children to O'Gara in the morning um, to the, to the school's parking lot on that side, um, and then any that were coming in after eight thirty, which would be um, considered. Um, late for um, for the uh, Magical Elementary School, then those um, um, families would would drive into into um, the um, into the Oval um, near the school Magical Elementary School's um, front. Okay, areas. so they should come down McElwee Street to Bishop Street yeah. and go right into the, the yep. Oval at the MES office. Yeah, they, and again, like like you talked about um, 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 safe driving, yeah. um, our dis our arrival would still be. Continuing until um, eight forty. Yeah. So as they're coming up Bishop Street, there could be cars coming towards Bishop Street, 
um, from, from the upper elementary school zone drop off. So folks, anybody that has uh, you know kids going to the elementary school, please be aware of your drop off and pick up because it is different from J. Muse. Um, I want to talk about the high school. Uh, the high school, you know, we have many different situations up there. Again, we have, you know, student drivers, um, inexperienced student drivers. We have some older st student drivers. We have teachers. We have parents dropping off. And we have school buses. So please, if you have anybody or you have any business going to the high school during, you know, opening a school or ending a school, Again, please use caution. Um, you know, there's many parking lots on either side. Uh, you know, and like I said, there's so much experience, different levels of experience in that area. Um, it is a safety concern. So please use caution. Um, school will be opening August 8th in Merrimack for all the school district, correct? September 8th, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so, you know, be ready, be prepared. You know, folks who don't take the initiative and, and, you know, you know, get up a little early, start your, you know, pre-planning for your, you know, travel routes. Uh, you know, you maybe you have to drop one kid off at elementary and another kid off at middle school. Mm -hmm. Um you know, we didn't talk too much about the middle school because, you know, they're kind of unique. They have their own their own driveway and, you know, they're off off the way. So, um, and, you know, I think they have the safety concerns pretty, you know, pretty minimal up mm -hmm. at the middle school, you know, due to the, um, you know, school being the newest one. They, you know, were able to, you know, make it a little easier for folks. Um, but again, anytime there's children and moving cars and buses, it is a major safety concern. So please use caution and, you know, help us out, help you out, help the school staff out, and, you know, mostly help the children out. Mm -hmm. They're excited to go to school. You know, they're not really, you know, looking for, you know, unsafe acts going on you know they're just excited and they just you know focused on going to school so and, and, you know um, one of the things that you made me think of Rob is also this special time we talked about um, the pickup but also I think for a little while um, the um, students leaving um, we, we're going to make sure everyone gets to their bus so so um, it, 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 it just takes a little, little bit of time and, and yeah. a dismissal for a, little, for, for a few days just to, so they learn where their bus stop is so basically what you're saying is have some patience. Mm -hmm. If people have patience, everything is much safer. So my last, I want to close out my show with, we're proud to announce our next Coffee with a Cop program. And it's August 26th from 9.30 to 11 at Starbucks at 17 Premium Outlets Boulevard. Please come and join us. Uh, just come meet us. It's an open agenda. Okay? Thanks for viewing this month's episode. Thank you.